Counselor Haman is one who helped Neo understand the importance of the union between machines and humans, giving Neo some vital advice during one of the one's most trying moments. But what if I told you that Counselor Haman is not who he seems to be, that his true identity is hidden in the Matrix? What if Counselor Haman secretly works for the Oracle under the identity of the Spoon Boy? Welcome to Matrix Explained. The desert of the real. Before we begin today's video, we would like to announce the giveaway of the Matrix Comics 20th Anniversary Edition. Co-created by the Wachowskis, it's a collection of short stories within the Matrix universe. We will also be giving away an original Matrix poster signed by Matrix Explained and a limited edition Matrix 300 piece puzzle. For your chance to win these prizes, please be subscribed to this channel, leave a like on this video, and leave in the comments what character you would like to see return in Matrix 4 and why. The winner will be announced on May 4th. Haman is one of the elders of Zion. He is wise and tends to favor Morpheus's ideology. As his title suggests, Haman is a member of the Zion Council, a group of individuals who makes joint decisions regarding city affairs. Haman is also an elder, which grants him authority to make unilateral decisions. He authorized Morpheus to take the Nebuchadnezzar to the dismay of a certain commander. I was just told you cleared the Nebuchadnezzar for takeoff. That is correct. Counselor, am I still in charge of our defense system? Of course. I believe I need every ship we have if we're going to survive this attack. I understand that, Commander. Then why did you allow the Nebuchadnezzar to leave? Because I believe our survival depends on more than how many ships we have. Haman awoke from the Matrix when he was a child. I figure I slept the first 11 years of my life, now I'm making up for it. In the movie, Haman was 67 years old and Zion was about 100. This means that Haman came to Zion when the city was barely 44 years old, possibly in time for him to meet the previous one. If Neo's predecessors all became the one around the same age, then they were in their early 30s when they restarted the Matrix and chose the new inhabitants of Zion. If Haman arrived at Zion at age 11 and Zion was founded nearly 44 years prior, then the fifth one, if alive, would have been about 76 years old. The former one worked in conjunction with the Oracle to perpetuate the Matrix cycle. All of the inhabitants of the Sixth Zion thought that their city was the first and only bastion of human civilization, but the architect explained otherwise. Five times has the city been founded and destroyed. Five times humans were taken out of the Matrix by the previous anomalies to populate the underground city. The point is that the anomaly number five lived in Zion from day one, convincing the people that one day they will defeat the machines and destroy the Matrix. If Haman met number five, this would explain why the prophecy of the one has been kept alive, even though many do not believe in it. When the Matrix was first built, there was a man born inside who had the ability to change whatever he wanted, to remake the Matrix as he saw fit. It was he who freed the first of us, taught us the truth. After he died, the Oracle prophesied his return and that his coming would hail the destruction of the Matrix, end the war. Someone had to have witnessed the Oracle prophesizing the return of the Savior and that someone would become the prophet of the Oracle who spreads the legend of the Savior. Out of all the Zion elders, Counselor Haman is the only one who philosophically or ideologically agrees with Morpheus and the Oracle, almost as if he shares the same beliefs. Then why did you allow the Nebuchadnezzar to leave? Because I believe our survival depends on more than how many ships we have. So we have established the possibility that Haman knew the fifth one and that he might be the one who kept the legend of the one alive. But why do we think that Counselor Haman is the spoon boy? There is a connection between the Oracle and Haman, one that goes beyond just ideology. Actually, there are two. Two moments in Matrix Reloaded 
that establish a possible connection between the two characters. One is when Neo admits to Haman that he can't sleep. Feels like everyone is sleeping very peacefully. Not everyone. I hate sleeping. Coincidentally, the Oracle tells Neo that she knows that he has been having trouble sleeping. How do you feel? I, uh... I know you're not sleeping. We'll get to that. Two, Haman enlightens Neo that humans and machines need each other. I like to be reminded this city survives because of these machines. These machines are keeping us alive while other machines are coming to kill us. If we wanted, we could smash them to bits. Although if we did, we'd have to consider what would happen to our lights, our heat, our air. And again, coincidentally, the Oracle says the same thing to Neo. It seemed that the Oracle and Haman were both conveying the same idea to Neo. But how could the Oracle have known that Neo was having trouble sleeping? It's one of two ways. Either the Oracle can see into Neo's code and somehow determine that he has sleeping issues, or is that someone told her? So if our theory is correct, then the Oracle's little spy would be none other than Counselor Haman. Rationally speaking, it would make sense that someone in a position of power, like Haman, is working for the Oracle. It would certainly explain why the Red Pills heed the words of an old woman who lives inside the Matrix. It was possibly Anomaly Number 5 who appointed Haman as the Oracle's prophet and advocate with the responsibility of influencing the newly freed Red Pills to believe in the Oracle. So to answer the question as to why we think the Spoon Boy is Haman, well, at no point do we see Haman enter the Matrix. However, the Oracle knew about Neo's nightmares. In the Matrix comic, Burning Hope, a potential was able to change their shell to appear as a grown man in the Matrix, when in reality, she was a little girl. So who's to say that a powerful potential like the Spoon Boy doesn't have the same ability? A potential who was an elder in the real world, but a child in the Matrix, and who has advised Neo in both worlds. In another Matrix comic titled, Artistic Freedom, the Spoon Boy calls the hallucination to Raven, a woman artist who saw sentinels in her dreams. These hallucinations made her understand that the sentinels are evil. The Spoon Boy does have the appearance of a child, but does not act like one. But by far the best piece of evidence of Haman is the Spoon Boy, is the boy's appearance. The Spoon Boy looks like a child monk seen in Buddhist temples. Reincarnation is an important part of their religion. There exists a process that Buddhist children go through to see if they are the reincarnation of Buddha. The process consists of showing the Buddhist children individually various objects that belong to the previous Dalai Lama to see if one of them recognizes the objects. Like in the Matrix, in Buddhism, it is believed that the body is only a shell and that the spirit survives and can reincarnate in a new shell. The Spoon Boy could symbolize the process by which the children undergo to see if they are Buddha. The Spoon Boy is the spirit of an elder leader inside the body of a child. Counselor Haman is the elder leader of Zion, whose incarnation in the Matrix may be one of a young boy. But do you agree? Is Haman the Spoon Boy? Was it Haman who sent Kid to deliver the spoon to Neo in Zion? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.